Hi everyone, Sabrina here with another video. This one is going to be a general chinwag one about my falling out with Sarah Jimas and why I'm not rushing out to buy Crescent City to a house of sky and breath. <sighs> okay, this is going to probably upset some people. So, you know, if you're a huge Sarah J Mass fan, you're allowed to be totally, you can love her books, you can worship her characters. I'm not saying that you can't do that. I am totally not telling you that you can't love her. This is me personally, why I have had enough, I think. Um, I discovered Sarah J Mass probably about four years, five years ago, when the Throne of Glass series was kind of really big. It was still in the middle of the book series, and we had the, the last couple of two or three books to come out, and everybody was really hyping her. And I thought, okay, this, this is a series I ought to try and read. So I got the first one, Throne of Glass, out of the library and slogged my way through it. I've probably mentioned this before, but I really did not like Selena. I thought she was just all mouth and no do. I, I don't think it did any good for her. I was just like, no, I, I just don't care. I mean, I liked the supporting characters, which is why I slogged my way through it. And I really sort of got into it in book two, Crown of Midnight, and then got really cross with it because of what happened to one of the characters I really, really liked and thought, well, okay, I'm now kind of invested though because there are other supporting characters in here that I really do enjoy. So I ended up blitz reading the series, reading Tower of Dawn with everybody else when it came out and finding actually that was one of my favourite books in the series. I don't know, I, I'm, I have weird taste. I obviously don't have popular taste either. And I really liked how the series ended. I thought it was a nice solid way to wrap everything up. I thought Sarah J Mass had done really well in all her plot points, particularly towards the second half of the series and everything tied together and I thought it was really well done. So I did like Throne of Glass a lot. Uh, around about the time that Agatar came out, I got the first one, read it and again hated Feyre. Uh, it must be something about Sarah J Mass's main characters I do not like. I, I just found her annoying and tedious and frustrating as a character. But there were some supporting characters that I did like. I did not like the main romance. I thought it was hugely problematic at the start and hey, guess who's right? Thank you. But I picked up book two, Cause of Mist and Ruin, and really liked it. That's like, okay, this is probably one of the best books in her writing that I have read. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. There were still problematic elements to the relationships. I'm not going to deny that at all. But it was really entertaining and yeah it, it was good stuff and then i stopped i didn't carry on with the agatha series i had court of wings and ruin to read and i've had that for about three four years now and i haven't read that i've got a court of star is it starlight what the novella whatever that one is god what was that i just flew past i mean yeah we're sorry we're in the middle of a storm things keep going past the window a little freaky and they've just sat there i haven't read them crescent city House of Earth and Blood came out just before lockdown, so two years ago, and I struggled to get into this massively. I know people are saying, oh, read the first 200 pages and then it really picks up. I'm sorry, I've just read a book, um, A Dark and Hollow Star, which does heavy world building in its first 50 pages, and yet I enjoyed it. This I just found tedious and frustrating and again I hate the main character I really don't like her I mean what is her name Bryce I don't like her she's just she's an awful person I really just don't like her and so I got to page 89 and stopped and I haven't picked this back up I have no inclination to pick this book back up which is a shame because it's an extremely pretty book I've got the Waterstones edition sprayed edges pretty front cover I don't care I don't want to read this I'm I'm just I don't want to do it so I'm not going to. I will be getting rid of this. And then I've seen the cover for the, the following book and it bugs me that the cover is not a similar style to this one. It, it's com it looks completely different. It doesn't feel like it's part of the same series. That might just be me being picky, but if you're going to do a big series and you want it to look fantastic and you want the fans to buy it, you at least make the covers so they feel part of the same series, not different. Anyway, that's just me ranting about covers. Um, so I'm not really interested in carrying on with Crescent City. I'm not 
going to carry on with the Akatar books. It's just not going to happen. And the fact they've done a cover change for that, and I, I hate the new covers completely and utterly. They're just, they are not reflective of the series at all. And I think there was a massive mistake on the publisher's behalf to do that. And I, I understand why they've done it, but massive mistake. So I will be getting rid of Crescent City. I will be getting rid of my Akatar series. That's actually going to go to a student uh, in the sixth form block who has the horrible covers and um, she really wants the original and it's like we can have mine so they're gonna have them for me which is brilliant because it clears the space up on the shelf you know my crescent city it's going to go i i just i don't want to read it i would keep the throne glass series because i did enjoy that quite a lot and possibly at some point in the future i will try and reread it probably not now because i'm just i'm not forgiving enough to her style and her characters to read it right now. If I read it right now, I would hate the series and probably get rid of them as well. But I want to wait a little bit until I feel differently. Or at least have forgotten how I feel about how cross these these characters make me. Um, so yeah, so that will probably be the last Sarah J Mass book I will ever buy. I'm not interested in anything else really. You know, two series that I just can't face continuing it. It's, that's that's it. I mean, I did the same for V. Schwab. I've tried a couple of her books from different series and I've not enjoyed them. I'm obviously not a V. Schwab fan. And Samantha Shannon is the other author. I've tried two books from her and I've not liked either of them. So she's probably another author that I will never ever pick up again. And I know people will be going, oh, you can't judge. And it's like, I'm sorry, two books, two different series and I don't like, it's not going to happen. You know, at this, at this point, I have too many other books to read to sit there and go, well, let's give them another try. I've given you two tries. I'm sorry. You know, it, 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 that's it. We've fallen out of love. But I know there are plenty of people out there who do love Sarah J Mass books, who do love Samantha Shannon, who do love B. Schwab, and, you know, me sitting there going, I'm not going to read them. That's my choice. It's just the way I feel at the moment. So, yeah. <laughs> it was a little sort of... I didn't mean to get ranty in the middle, but... It's just, I, I think it's important to acknowledge when you've fallen out of love with an author or a book series and admit that it's okay to do that. You know, we, we have books we put in our nostalgia piles. My Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is in my nostalgia pile. I will probably never reread Alice because I have fond memories of reading it as a child and I know if I read it now, all these years later, I'm probably not going to enjoy it as much and I'm probably going to find lots of problems with it. And I know lots of people do that with books. I mean... The HP series is another one that people seem to have lots of nostalgia for. I, I'm really glad I never got into it and was never interested in it, but I do know a lot of people keep those books for the nostalgia effect. You can do that, but it's also good and it's healthy for your bookcases to get rid of the books and the series that you are not enjoying, that you are not going to continue reading, that you just... It doesn't matter how pretty a book is, if you're not going to read it, if you don't like it, it's okay to get rid of it. It's okay to give it to someone who will enjoy it. That's all right. That's what I'm doing with most of my Sarah J Mass books because they don't spark joy, as the saying goes. So that's five books that are coming off my shelves. And they're not the only books that I've got rid of recently. Um, I had the Land of Stories um, six box collection and that's gone. I've got a student at school who's reading them. And I said, would you like the set? Because I'm looking to get rid of mine. And he said, yes, yes, male student. Um, so he's taking them at the moment. The, what was the other series? The Alex Ryder series, that's gone. That's gone to my son's boarding school. They've got it in their house room now because we're not going to read them again. My boys are not interested in reading them. That's gone. So that was seven, eight books. And to be honest, I need the bookcase space. I can't afford to hold on to books that I'm not going to read, that my sons aren't going to read, that my husband's not going to read, that I'm never going to reread. And it's like, I'd rather have books on my shelves that spark joy. So there we go. So if you have learnt anything from this video, if your books do not spark your joy, let them go. No, don't start singing. Let your thoughts down below, you know, whether it's Sarah J Maas or somebody else that you've had to let go from your bookcases. Let me know. I'd be interested to see which authors you've fallen out of love with. And not for problematic reasons, not any reason like that, just that you've fallen out of love with them. You, you're just not going to go there anymore. Let me know down, down below. Be really interested to see which names come up all the time. As always, usual MacGuffins in the description box down below. Go and check out those uh, booktubers. Thank you very much. And as always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading. Be safe.